from Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production Suddenly at Spring, Director Mitchell Lyson, Star Fred McMurray... Hollywood Screen Directors present Love on a Note of Laughter, the romantic motion picture comedy Suddenly It's Spring, starring Fred McMurray and introducing the director of the film, Mitchell Lyson. Our guest screen director tonight literally rode to success on a drawing board. For it was his exceptional ability as a designer of sets and costumes that won him an opportunity to direct and to fulfill his theory that the function of the director is to provide the channel through which an actor expresses emotion. The taste and distinction he brings to his work have been illustrated by such outstanding films as To Each His Own, Kitty, Hold Back the Dawn, and, of course, Suddenly It's Spring. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mitchell Lyson. Thank you. You know, this is a fine opportunity to clear up a little misunderstanding. I've been accused of being a disrespectful character when really I'm not. It's just that I have a passion for seeing austere dignity flipped right on its uh, shell pink ear. <laughs> to me, that's largely the fun of making comedies. For instance... Take suddenly it's spring. What could be more undignified than a couple of very proper law partners who also happen to be a husband and wife playing a cross-country game of tag? Now here's the story, starring Fred McMurray in his original role of Peter with Virginia Gregg as Mary. The troop ship steamed up the narrows, moved proudly down the fairway, and was warped neatly into its New York pier. The ship's rails were jammed with returning soldiers, and among them was Captain Morley, formerly of Morley & Morley, attorneys at law. Captain Morley was eagerly scanning the crowd in the dock, looking for that other Morley who was a partner in marriage as well as in law. After all, they haven't seen each other in seven years. And where was the other Morley? The other Morley, spouse to Captain Morley, was in a telephone booth on the pier. Telephoning, of course. Hello, Violet. Honey, the, the ship just docked. Yeah. Thousands of dog faces aboard. <laughs> That's a fine thing to say about my wife and a white captain at that. Oh, now, honey, look. Any American soldier is called a dog face, even if he is a woman. Yeah. Of course I love you, honey. Sure, I love you. That, that's why I'm here to meet my wife. I'll get her to sign the divorce consent the minute she's in the apartment and, and a bit settled, huh? Yeah. Oh, I think I see her coming down the gangplank now. Goodbye, darling. Mary! Mary! Oh, excuse me. Uh, Mary! Captain Morley! Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mary! Here I am, Mary! Peter! You're here, Captain. Peter, darling, how are you? Uh, hello, Mary. After all these years. Uh, Mary, uh, you have a nice boat ride? Is that all you can say after our being apart seven years? Uh, let's go home, huh, Mary? Well, that's more like it. Or is it? I've got those divorce papers there for you to sign. It isn't. Isn't what? More like it. Well, let's go home, Peter. again. At last. Yeah, home at last. I'll uh, get my things together and move out right away. Peter. Hmm? Peter, we haven't seen each other since 1942. Are you absolutely sure we want this divorce? Why, yeah. Aren't you? No. I've changed my mind. I'd like to save our marriage. And quite aside from that, 
I'm in the army teaching wax how to make their marriages work, and my own husband's demanding a quick divorce. How does it look? Well, I wasn't demanding, Counselor. I've got to go about it in this way. As long as you're in uniform, I've got to get your written consent to the divorce. But I won't be in uniform forever. Can't you wait until I'm out of the army and help me save my face a little? Uh, maybe we better talk about this later. What are you doing for di- uh, tonight? Nothing in particular. Well, how about having dinner with me? Are you being nice to a returning serviceman? Well, I'll uh, pick you up at eight. We'll go to the Moonlight Terrace. Remember the Moonlight Terrace? Yes. Soft music. A table in the corner. Shall we bring our briefcases? Hello, Violet? Yeah. Yeah, I just left her in our apartment. Uh, Her apartment, I mean. But I'm moving out, I tell you. Oh, yeah, she looks all right. Lost 15 pounds in the army. After all, I dropped 30 pounds myself in the Pacific. I... I ought to drop the other 170 in the Atlantic? (laughs) Violet, that's not a very kind thing to say. I'm doing my best to get Mary to sign that divorce consent. I'm having dinner with her tonight, and I'll get her to sign then for sure. Sure, sure. Oh, sure, you can go out with Jack Lindsay. That's only fair. Besides, Jack is my best client. Yeah. Well, have fun and give Jack my best. Yeah. Bye-bye, baby. And in consideration of such agreement, the following real and personal property shall be divided as follows. One cooperatively owned... Mary. I'm listening, Counselor. One cooperatively owned apartment, Mary. One beach house with location as specified in... uh... Hey, Yasha, why don't you take that fiddle of yours and go watch Rome burn? Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter, why don't you order pumpkin? Philistine ignoramus. Peasant. fiddling in my ear like that radio comedian. I asked him to play, remember? Suddenly it's spring. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see, where were we? Uh, One piano, baby grand, Mary. One combination radio phonograph, Mary. One washing machine, Mary. Doesn't Violet wash? One combination chess and checker set, me. I thought Violet had sex appeal. Now, Mary. Now you sound like that radio comedian. Mary, I took you to dinner here for a serious chat about... Jumping Jupiter. A favorite steeplechase horse of mine, Jumping Jupiter. Uh, Mary, uh, look, look, I, I've got to go and make a phone call, a very important phone call. Uh, excuse me, I'll, I'll be right back. Hmm. Now let's look around and see what made Jupiter jump. Well, good evening, charming and beautiful who's it? But wasn't that Peter Morley, the eminent attorney who just fled this table? Why, yes, it was. Well, I'm Jack Lindsay, his richest and handsomest client, and this is Violet Fay. I'm Mrs. Peter Morley. I'm in trouble. Tell me, Violet. What do you hear from my old man? Hello, uh, hello, head waiter. This is Mr. Morley. I'm calling from the cloakroom. Now, look, will you take a telephone inside to Mr. Jack Lindsay's table? He's with a lady. Now, I want to talk to the lady. Thanks. Hello, Violet. I want to warn you that the brunette sitting alone at the table near the bandstand is Mary, my wife. She... Oh, you're Mary, my wife. They, uh, they came over to our table, huh? Well, it's grand, grand. Uh, Violet looks just like Miss Emily Borda. Who's Miss Emily Borda? Oh, Miss Emily Borda of 1929. <laughs> oh, don't be catty, Mary. Look, uh, put her on the phone, will you? That's a good scout. Uh, whack, I mean. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh Violet? Violet, this is Petey Pie. I... Oh. Now, look, look. No, no, Violet. Is it my fault that Jack just happened to take you uh, to the two-light Maris? I mean, the mine two Laris? I mean... Oh, no, never mind. Mary. Mary and I were just going over the settlement papers. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'll get the consent signed tonight. No, I, I won't go home with her. Don't worry. Well, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll get her to sign in the morning when she's got cold cream on her face. Is that all right? Well, I'll spend the night with Jack. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take you home first, and then I'll spend the night with Jack. Okay. Uh, Let me talk with Jack now, will you? (laughs) 
Jack. I'm sleeping. Well, wake up. By what right do you take Violet to dinner when I'm out with my wife? Well, you told her I could. Well, that was after you asked her. You know what I think, Pietro? Oh, don't fracture your brain. What? I think your wife is still in love with you. Why? I don't know. Is she interested in natural history? Now, don't give me egg-shaped answers to square questions. Well, I made a pass at her. You did? I always make passes at girls I make passes at. Well, what happened? I must see my dentist concerning a loose tooth. <laughs> she probably likes you. I'm encouraged no end. If she ever loves me, will I live? Oh, no, Amici, not at dawn. Hello. Oh, darling, hello. No, not at all. I'm glad you called. Listen, haven't I given you some of the best leers of my life already? Corn is still green. You going away? Fort Sheridan? The war is over. Hey, is that Mary? All right, I'll have my hotel operator call you at 5 a.m. Good night, sweet princess, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Night. That was Mary. Mary's taking a little lamb to Fort Sheridan tomorrow. To Fort Sheridan? Orders. She's leaving on the North Side Limited. Well, she can't do that. I've got to get that divorce consent signed before she leaves town. She can't do that. What on earth are you... Listen, Peter's on this train, too. Peter? Now, Mary, if you make any attempt to hold your husband, you're making the mistake of your life. Now, let him go. Sign those papers and get him out of your beautiful hair. You're young. You've got a right to love and marriage. With me, of course. Mary, I... Oh, hello, Peter. What were you two talking about? Each other. Jack, old boy, would you mind if I had a word alone with my wife? Remember what I told you, Mary. Make everybody happy. I think he's fond of you in his bungling way. Good catch. I'll unpack if you don't mind. You're back in uniform, I see. I hate traveling in a low-cut evening gown, don't you? Uh, Counselor, Sorry I had to leave New York in such a hurry. A new assignment. Uh Advising Wax at the Fort Sheridan Separation Center in the Art of Being Happily Married. I'm making a stopover in Detroit. Perhaps you'd like to join me there. Well, look, I'm getting off at at, at, at Harmon. And all I want for you to do is sign... There seem to be so many misunderstandings these days. Mary... Marriages break up for no tangible reason. Now, Mary, would you... I'm just wondering if too many married couples give up too easily without giving their marriage every possible chance to survive. And in my work at Fort Sheridan, I'm going to stress the fact that out of every marriage in the United States... Hello, Violet. Look, honey, I I haven't got much time. I'm phoning from the station in Harmon. In Harmon? Yes. I'm on the train bound for Chicago. Well, I'm trying to get this consent signed. No, 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 I haven't yet. Oh, sure, I'll get it to sign before we get to Poughkeepsie, for sure. Oh, here, I gotta go. My train's pulling out. Yes. Yes, I will. Come on. Hello, Violet. I'm in Poughkeepsie. No, Violet, not yet, but... But, well, look, I can't help it. Things keep on happening. People keep on interrupting, and then my fountain pen doesn't write, and when I try to borrow a fountain pen... Peter! It... Uh, go away, Jack, will you? That was Jack, darling. Pietro! Uh, Violet, look. Uh, Violet. Violet, are you there? Come in, New York. Come in, New York. Pedro, my friend. No. Oh, she hung up on me. Also, your train has departed. Gone? If you're more comfortable with monosyllables, gone, yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter, Jack. I can see now. Mary will never give me that divorce while she's in uniform. Yes, she will, or I'll die trying. Now, look. Mary's stopover in Detroit gives us a chance to get back to LaGuardia and beat her to Chicago by plane. And what does that get us? The Bendix Trophy? <laughs> you could persuade Mary to sign that consent if you'd only use your head. Now, stop taking her to dinner. Stop calling her darling and consular. Mm-hmm. Up to now, you've been turning on the charm like a cover boy. So the more you're around, the more she wants you around. Oh, so what do I do? Poker with sharp sticks? Well, there must be some certain type of man she can't stand. If you're as repulsive to her as I'm sure you are at heart, she'll drop you like a hot brick. <laughs> you know that might work at that. Sure it will. Get repulsive. You can do it. <laughs> pour it on. Pour it on. Yeah, yeah, pour it on. It's wonderful you to help me like this, Jack. So unselfish. Like a bat borrowing blood. 
Poor Mary, she'll hate you in Chicago, thanks to little Jackie. Yeah. Peter Morley, the louse that Jack built. <laughs> The Hollywood Screen Directors are presenting Suddenly It's Spring, starring Fred McMurray with Virginia Gregg and Frank Lovejoy, and introducing the director of the film, Mitchell Lyson. Well, there's Mary now, Peter, surrounded by newspaper men and that whack major. Here's your cigar. Oh, thanks. Now, hold it. Now? No, no, hold it. Uh, all right. Send me in, coach. I'm fresh as a daisy. <laughs> now, don't forget, blow cigar smoke in everybody's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready? Yeah, ready. Be beastly. <laughs> right. Let's go. yee <laughs> Mary? Hey, Mary, look who. Superman, remember? Peter, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago, hog butcher of the world, baby. Come on, give me a great big smacker, huh? Peter. Please, Peter. <laughs> How do you like it, folks? The little woman. <laughs> All we had in the Pacific was coconuts. <laughs> oh, Captain Morley, it, what is the uh, meaning of this? Uh, it's all right, Major uh, Cheever. This is my husband, Mr. Peter Morley. Morley. Mr. Mary Morley to you guys and gals. Mr. Mary Morley, attorney at law. My card, folks. Here, boy, take the card. Here. You ever get in a jam? Look me up, folks. Take a card. Major here, Cheever, r- reporters, uh, <laughs> photographers. How are you, Mage? Oh, oh. <laughs> Knock those chips off your shoulder, eh, Mage? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. Come on, little woman. We got matters to attend to. Long time no see except the coral sea. <laughs> oh. Some joke, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Really, Captain Moore, we must get back to Fort Sheridan. Yes, Major Cheever. Oh, Ixnay, Ixnay, Major. I've got reservations at a hotel. Can't you give the little gal a break? Well. <laughs> That's a girl, Major. Now, how about a great big... Girl? No! And stop blowing smoke in my face. It makes my eyes water. Major, I, Major, eyes water. Major, That's another joke. I got another joke. <laughs> oh, man, Major, eyes water. <laughs> hey, you know, Major... That reminds me of the story. I can't. I don't know what I can tell it. That reminds me of the story about the gopher and the kangaroo. That... Really, <laughs> Mr. Morley? No, oh, is there such a story? <laughs> <laughs> We'd better go now, dear. I understand everything, Captain. Goodbye, Mr. Morley. Goodbye, Major Eyeswater. <laughs> <laughs> And now behold the bridal suite. Love seats drenched with costly perfumes from Zanzibar. That'll be enough, Peter. (laughs) Lamps shedding filtered moonlight. (laughs) May I congratulate you on your splendid performance? Anything to help the little woman in her career. You mean anything to get that divorce consent? You've made me an object of ridicule to the press and my fellow officers. Object of pity married to a goon. Senior grade... (laughs) <laughs> Logic tells me to sign and hand over that consent But I'm not going to do it You're not? Not just yet You can cool your heels in the living room Until I've settled the problem In my own way But, Counselor Good night Violet, you're, you're down in the lobby. What, what, what are you doing down in the lobby? How, how did you know we were... Oh, Jack told you, huh? No, 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 don't come up yet. I am not. I, I just loosened my tie a little, that's all. Peter. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, Violet. Please have a call back in a minute. I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, uh, call back in a minute, will you, Violet? I'll be free to talk then. Come in here. I dasn't. You, you come in here. All right. 
I'll come to you. I don't have commitments elsewhere. You want your freedom very much, don't you? Well, don't you think it'll be best all around? Well, I hate to see the person I think you are going to pieces before my eyes, just for the sake of my signature on a piece of paper. I don't like to see you lose your dignity like that. And it's partially my fault. I suppose I should let you go without a fight. Except that I found out I'd never fallen out of love with you. It's all over now. Being in love still? Fighting to hold on to you. If you really want to go, here's the divorce consent, all signed. That is, if you really want to go... Peter? Yes? Yes, Violet. Yes, it, it's all signed. I... I'm coming right down. It's ready to go when the truck men come. Everything of yours packed up, Peter? Yeah, I'm all set. You're not taking much, but it leaves the apartment looking awfully empty somehow. Yeah. Uh, counselor. Yes? Peter? I wish you'd get the divorce. I feel so silly going to Reno. That's what you men always wanted, equal rights with women. Are you going to pose for the papers with your legs crossed, Peter? Are you going to marry Jack Lindsay? He loves me. He is a good catch. Hello. Oh, hello, Vi. For once, I'd like it to be someone selling subscriptions. Well, yeah, Violet, we're, everything's all packed in two neat little cases ready to... Well, but Violet, all I need is my clothes. Mary's entitled to most of the furniture and the piano and things. After all, she's a woman. Oh, sure, Vi, you're a woman, too, obviously, but... No, 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 Violet, you won't have to stand up during our first year of marriage. I'll, I'll buy new furniture. All right. All right, I'll... I'll... Yes, I'll talk to her. Mary. Who keeps that woman in nickels? You? Mary, uh, Violet seems to think I should have asked for more in the settlement. She's getting you, Peter. What more does she want? However, you forgot the things in the closet which weren't discussed and which are yours for the taking. Stuff in what closet? I mean, what stuff in the closet? Over here. Forgotten trifles of the Morley marriage, the remnants of a love that was young and brave, if I may grow so chintzy. This platter up here. Remember? Well, what do you know? Sure, I remember. We saved our first client from going to jail, and he paid us off in this rare bit of china. What if the man was charged with robbing a china shop? We proved he was innocent to the jury. <laughs> but we'd never talk about it to ourselves, would we? I wanted to throw the darn platter away to begin with. Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you? Well, do it now, why don't you? Roger. <laughs> I feel better already. And then this music box. I got you that for our first anniversary, remember? Oh, yeah. It played music and you could keep cigarettes in it. What will they think of next? Flying machines, I bet. <laughs> I gave up a permanent for this little box and you broke it. Well, I didn't mean to break it. I was just clowning around with it, remember? Dancing around with it and singing. Why is my heart dancing? Imagine. <laughs> Sing. Peter, Ooh, get off of my sofa. Peter! <gasps> Peter, are you hurt? Uh, bring out the chain and measure. I'm sure we made a first down. <laughs> well, what else in the closet? Oh. What? This. It's hurt us more than anything else. Oh. You. You bought me this layout. It's so sweet. You're doing it. Usually it's the woman who. Oh, it would have been nice to have a baby, but... You wanted it so much. Oh, well. I'm sorry, Peter. I know. But instead of going into your shell and trying to lose yourself in your work, you, you could have given me a chance to, to prove it didn't matter. It mattered, all right. Yeah, but we could have talked it over. We, we could have adopted a baby, or maybe a couple of them. Isn't it strange, Peter? 
Everything we've taken out of this closet proves that there'd have been no misunderstandings in our marriage if we'd been honest with each other. Even this music box. I wanted to have it fixed, but you claimed you hated the tune. Hated it? I liked it. If that broken box got to be such an issue, you wouldn't admit it. Well, people are children, you know. Well, uh, you keep the music box. Oh, no. No, you keep it. No, yeah, but I bought it for you. No, I want you to have it. Here, take I it. I wouldn't think of it. Take it. No. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Peter. Hey. You fixed it. Listen. We fixed it. All it needed was a shaking up, just like people. Oh, Peter, isn't it sweet? It's like it used to be. And to think it's been in that dark closet all these years when all it needed was to be shaken up. Hello. Yes, yes, Violet. Yes, Violet. Yes, Violet. But, Vi Violet, listen. Listen, before you go on, there's something I've wanted to tell you for a long time. Violet. Get lost! Peter! That was the loveliest thing I've ever heard you say. My wonderful good man. Senior grade. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the NBC Theater dims the lights and loads its guns with laughter to bring you The Ghost Breakers, starring Bob Hope. And now, here again are Fred McMurray and Virginia Gregg and screen director Mitchell Lyson. Virginia, you know what I like about radio? No, what's that, Fred? Well, Uncle Mitch here can't talk me into breaking my neck doing trick falls. <laughs> We've made nine pictures together, and believe me, working for Mitch isn't acting. Well, what do you call it? Assault and battery. <laughs> Virginia's gotten so that when I do a picture with Mitch, the studio automatically sends me three bottles of liniment with a script. <laughs> Why, Uncle Fred, if the script calls for a fall, I just like a little realism. Oh, sure, sure, realism. You know how you can tell a Mitchell actor, Mitchell Lyson actor, Virginia? Mm -mm. By his behavior on the screen? By the lumps on his head. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make allowances for Fred, Virginia. Look at him, the poor, frail little creature. <laughs> Mitch is the only director in Hollywood who likes to see a man fall down on the job. <laughs> is he really that tough, Fred? <laughs> well, confidentially, Virginia, I wouldn't want him to hear this, but he's the fellow who taught me the picture business, sort of. There's not a finer director in Hollywood, nor a finer guy. What are you two mumbling about? No, we're just talking. You wouldn't understand. Good night, Mitch. Good night, Virginia. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. And good night to you, Fred McMurray, Virginia Gregg, and Mitchell Lyson. <laughs> Suddenly at Spring was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, currently releasing Alias Nick Beale, starring Ray Milland, Audrey Totter, and Thomas Mitchell. Fred McMurray can currently be seen with Madeline Carroll in Don't Trust Your Husband, a James Nasser production. Mitchell Lyson's next Paramount release will be Bride of Vengeance, starring Paulette Goddard, John Lund, and McDonald Carey. Included in tonight's cast were Frank Lovejoy, Hal Gerard, Margaret Brayton, and Dan Riss. Suddenly at Spring was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Ray Dietrich. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, The Ghost Breakers, Director, George Marshall, Star, Bob Hope. The NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.